Niger was once regarded as an ally of the West, but after the coup which occurred in July 2023, leading to the removal of former President Mohamed Bazoum from power, everything changed. The West in conjunction with the regional bloc, ECOWAS went ahead to condemn the coup and impose stringent economic sanctions on Niger, thinking that it would compel the military authorities to reinstate the deposed president. However, despite the stringent sanctions which put pressure on the economy, the military junta of Niger stood his ground and refused to heed the dictates of the West, which viewed democracy as a tool to further its interests. And, according to a former minister of Niger, one of the reasons why General Tiani was able to stand his ground and resist Western sanctions was that China supported Niger. China, with its non-interference policy, an attribute that has made it a preferred choice of partner in recent times, continued to invest in Niger even after the coup. Unlike the West, which loves to interfere and play the hero in the affairs of Africa, China prefers a mutually beneficial relationship without any form of interference in the affairs of the host countries. It is this attribute that has pushed African countries farther away from their traditional partners, the West, and closer to China and Russia. Recently, Niger State Television announced that the military junta of Niger has signed a $400 million deal with a Chinese state-owned oil giant as part of its plan to diversify international partnerships after cutting ties with France and the United States. The agreements, signed by Niger's Prime Minister Ali Mahaman Lamin Zaina and CNPC Chairman Joe Zuokun, provide for the joint marketing of Niger's crude oil. Under these arrangements, China will make an advance payment of $400 million to Niger, which will be paid from revenues generated by the sale of crude oil on the international market. According to the information published by the government, the repayment will be spread over 12 months with an interest rate of 7%. Speaking to the press after signing the deal, Prime Minister Zaina stated that, there is no shadow over this as we have safeguarded the interests of our country. China is a great friend for Niger. We can never say it enough, he added. The Prime Minister further added that, it must be remembered since the beginning of this great oil adventure, China has always been at the side of our country and today it is proven that at such crucial moments, we could obviously manage to request an advance. These are Niger's rights, and we will give ourselves all the means to repay them. According to Prime Minister Zaina, the funds will be managed transparently and will be used primarily for the defense and security of the country, which faces persistent challenges linked to the violent activities of jihadist groups affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. In addition to security and defense, the funds will also be used to settle debt payments and investments in agricultural development and improve medical services. Since the coup occurred in July 2023, Niger has missed around $600 million in debt payments. Hence, the funds are needed to settle some part of that debt. According to recent statements from Chinese oil extraction authorities, the marketing of Niger's crude oil on the international market, initially scheduled for January 2024, will finally begin in May 2024. Since 2008, China has been investing billions of dollars in Niger, especially in its oil industry, building the country's major oil refineries and exploring its oil fields with the hope of a share of all revenues. And it has been doing this through its state-owned oil company, PetroChina. PetroChina single-handedly built Niger's oil industry when it began drilling in the Sahel in 2008 under the risk of terrorist attacks. It took over after Western companies abandoned their own projects as too costly and perilous. China's investments in the industry enabled Niger to start refining and producing oil through the Soraz refinery in 2011 for the domestic market. According to reports, this refinery could refine around 20,000 barrels of oil every day. However, in 2018, China decided to up its game by expanding Niger's oil production through the construction of a vast new pipeline called the Niger Benin Crude Oil Pipeline. It received approval for the project from the Niger government in June 2018 and the government of Benin in August 2019. The 2,000 kilometers crude oil pipeline connects the Agadem Rift Basin region in Niger to Port Seam Terminal in the Republic of Benin, and it has the capacity of producing at least 90,000 barrels per day. Initially, 
There was fear that the pipeline would not be completed as a result of the sanctions imposed by ECOWAS on Niger, which Benin as a member of the bloc was obligated to obey. According to some sources, the sanctions prevented important equipment from crossing the border between the two countries. As a result, several pump stations were waiting for equipment stuck in Benin. However, on February 24, 2024, the regional bloc dominated by oil powerhouse Nigeria announced that it was easing the sanctions imposed on Niger with immediate effect for humanitarian reasons, thereby ending a no-fly zone, border closures, and financial restrictions on state assets such as Niger's state-owned company, Sonidep. With the easing of the sanctions, work resumed on the project, and recent reports suggest that the Niger-Benin pipeline has been completed and could see its first cargo lifted in late April 2024. According to Jim Burkhard, S&P Global's Vice President of Oil Markets, Energy and Mobility, Niger is set to become the world's newest oil exporter. Despite the political situation in the country, Niger was able to successfully overcome this situation or obstacles that could have prevented exports or hobbled the start of them. In essence, the economic importance to Niger and of the pipeline to Benin gained the upper hand. This increase in oil production in Niger will no doubt give a boost to the economy which has declined recently in the face of sanctions. However, critics have called out the $400 million deal signed between Niger and China, saying that this kind of deal increases countries' vulnerability to debt. This kind of deal is called a resource-backed deal and it's extremely popular with Chinese lenders. As with the case of Niger, it involves countries giving out their resources in exchange for loans. This model first began in Angola, which received billions of dollars from China for its reconstruction at the end of the country's 27-year civil war in 2000 and still uses oil shipments to repay Chinese loans. At the time, Western countries and international financial institutions were not willing to grant aid to Angola regarding the country as a risky venture because it had just come out of a 27-year civil war. The only country willing to offer help was China, which invested billions of dollars and helped to build the country. The president of the Africa Development Bank, Akinwumi Adesina, has however called for an end to loans given in exchange for oil or natural resources, describing them as non-transparent, unfair and corruptible adding that they complicate debt resolution and mortgage the future of countries. Speaking during the summit for new global financing pact held in France last year, he said that Africa must end all natural resources-backed loans. Guyud Moore, a policy fellow at the Washington-based Center for Global Development and a former minister in Liberia, said the China-Niger oil deal is not a departure from Chinese practice. He said, China is regime agnostic, so a junta in Niger was never going to be an impediment to Chinese engagement. He further added that this deal is a lifeline for Niger, which is still recovering from the West African sanctions and reduction in Western engagement. While resource-backed loans may not be ideal, the fact is China's deal with Niger is a better option than the country's previous deal with France or any other Western countries. Western loans to Africa usually come with conditions that are usually detrimental to the sovereignty and interests of the African country. However, China loans are based on nut benefits between both countries, which is how it ought to be. There is no ulterior motive such as trying to influence the political affairs of the country in question. For China, it is purely business. However, just because African countries have come to this realization and have chosen to partner more with China than the West, the West has taken to the media to distort China's image, saying that it is dangerous for African countries to partner with China. They say it's dangerous because China is using these investments to plunge African countries into debt. But in the real sense, it's simply business. China gives loans to these countries, and in return, they give China the equivalent of their resources just like they discredit the image of African leaders who do not dance to their tune, the West also discredits China and Russia, calling them unsuitable partners to turn the minds of African leaders against them. However, Africa is awakening and the leaders have realized that there are more options, far better than the West. Whether the West likes it or not, things have changed and it can never be the same again.
What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.